It's still 6.59 on my uh, my one. I'm just waiting for it to tip over to seven. It's gone seven on my watch as well, so we'll say it's seven o'clock, so we'll start. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's uh, planning committee. Uh, for those who don't know me, my name is David Watts. I'm the chair of the committee. Sat next to me is uh, Ryan Dawson, who's the head of planning at the council. And on these first two rows of tables around are the... Uh, members of the committee who will take the decisions uh, tonight. The process for each application is pretty much the same, that um, I will ask Mr Dawson to introduce the application. Um, there is a recommendation attached to each uh, uh, application, either to approve or, or refuse uh, permission. Uh, I will move that and Councillor McGrath, who is the Deputy Chair of this committee, will second it. Um, before we do that, though, um, for two of the applications, we do have public speakers. And um, uh, so for those, I would ask uh, the, um, uh, the people who are speaking to take the seat where Councillor McGrath, uh, uh, Councillor McCray, I beg your pardon, is currently sat, sat, put my teeth in, currently sat, who is the gentleman in the red uh, uh, jacket and um, there's a microphone there and uh, if you are a public speaker you've got three minutes I'll give you a prompt about 30 seconds before the end uh, so that uh, you know it's time to be starting to uh, think about winding up um, once we've moved the recommendation uh, that simply opens matters for uh, debate it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, um, we agree with it or that we disagree with it. Uh, it's simply the way it opens up the debate. And so the members of the committee will then speak. Uh, and the uh, procedure that we followed for many years here is I will invite people to speak as often as they, uh, uh, they wish on an item. Obviously, I do ask members to uh, uh, try and be succinct as far as possible in uh, what they say. If anybody can't hear, please say so, and uh, I'll make sure that people speak up, and I'll ask members to remember to switch your microphones on uh, when you speak. We will then, uh, at the end of the debate on each item, we will vote on it. Voting is normally just by a show of hands. Uh, if um, uh, anyone wants a recorded vote, we can do that, but normally it's just done by a show of hands, and it's a straight majority wins, so... Uh, there's normally 13 members on this committee, so 7-6 is the, uh, um, the figures. I don't think everyone's quite here today, um, but it, it's just done by a straight majority. If it's a tie, I have a casting vote as chair. OK, so with those introductions, we'll then uh, move on to the agenda. There's a couple of items, or four items, to go through before we have the uh, um, the... Uh, specific applications. Firstly, apologies for absence. Um, I think so. Councillor Hallam. Um, apologies from Councillor David Grindle. I'm substituting for him. Thank you very much. Um, I've been sent apologies from Councillor Margaret Handley as well. Um, she's not uh, uh, not very well. Uh, any others? Millen. No? Uh, from Millen. Right, thank you very much. Yes, so from Councillor Radulovic. Item two, any declarations of interest? Thank you. Item three, minutes of the last meeting. Uh, these are at pages five to 16 of the application, uh, uh, of the agenda. I'll move these as a true and correct record. I'll second that, Chair. Thank you. Any corrections or alterations that are needed? If not, can I see all those in favour? Thank you very much. That is carried, and I shall sign these as we uh, go through. Item four is notification of lobbying. Uh, lobbying is when somebody speaks to us about an application before uh, the meeting. Perfectly fine and proper to do that. Um, but we do want everything to be done above board. And so uh, we do ask members to declare if they've been lobbied. And in fact, there's a form that, uh, uh, that we fill into that effect. But I would ask people as well, if you've been lobbied, just to mention that when you first speak on an item. It doesn't affect the ability of members to speak or to vote on any item, but we do want the, it to be clear uh, what has been said. OK, so with those four, we then turn to the specific uh, applications. The first one is uh, number 5.1, which is Field Farm, Ilkeston Road in Stapleford. This is a variation of condition 
uh, the planning reference 200116, which is uh, one that's already been granted. Um, and this is a, a variation by changing the layout and changing some of the, uh, uh, the house types. Uh, so, Mr Dawson, we'd like to introduce this. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes, whilst there's a fairly long description based on previous hybrid application, essentially this application relates to updating the house types and amending a few parts of the layout that have been previously agreed. This is largely due to the fact that um, the site has been sold from Westman Homes to Peveril Homes. Um, principle is absolutely fine. It's been in the local plan for several years, and those who have been on the planning committee for several years will be aware of some of the history of this. There's no change in the numbers, and there's no changes to the outline elements at all. The layout changes, shown in the submitted plans and early in the report, um, and moving some of the houses from more courtyard-style parking arrangement to one where there's more practical front parking, which we're happy with in terms of future occupiers and amenity perspective. Um, some of the affordable houses have been repositioned, but we're content with suggested changes, as are the council's housing department. Um, the house type changes, which are in page 25 of the report, um, we consider to be acceptable and actually show better design overall than was previously approved. The minor layout changes and updated house types and the relationship with phase one are also all considered to be acceptable, and we can see no issues in this regard. The section 106 is not being altered. All details will be carried across, and a suitable section 106 addendum or linking document, call it what you will, will be drawn up to reflect this. We're very happy with suggested changes and recommend approval. With regard to late items, and I'll say this with apologies to everybody, um, whilst none of the changes here relate to the outline scheme, we need to recreate a decision notice where all the relevant conditions are covered. And as phase one has been built out, and details relating to many of the other conditions to the other phases have already been discharged, this is quite tricky. Therefore, with close working with the planning officer and the planning agents, we've just about got it right. But apologies for the suggested changes. If it's not clear, please let me know. But basically, we're tweaking the wording of a couple of conditions and we need to insert a couple of extra conditions to make sure all the issues are covered and to make sure that all the previous elements that have been discharged as part of the other schemes are still carried across where relevant. Very happy recommend approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, councillor uh, Richard McRae is the ward councillor uh, for uh, this ward, which is Stapleford North. Councillor McRae would like to speak on it, so uh, uh, Richard, I will hand over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, and um, Happy New Year to everybody as well. Right. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm speaking this evening as one of the Stapleford North Ward councillors. I've spoken at great length about this application, with it being, which is being determined tonight with my fellow councillor. Jan Gould. We have serious concerns regarding the social and affordable element of the application. Westermans had mixed this element of housing around the phase two of the site and this had been approved by Broxborough Council previously. However, the new company has ownership of the development and their plan is to segregate the social and affordable housing into one specific corner. This will create an us and them community and one could even go as far as the suggestion that it creates a ghetto. Furthermore, if you examine phase one of the development, the social and affordable element was all pushed into one corner of the site and basically fenced off from the rest of the development. This is surprisingly, sorry, this not surprisingly is already causing issues in the area. But before anyone says I'm only raising these concerns because it's opposite my house, this is not the case. I get on well with my new neighbours and it's very easy to just walk across the road and help and support them as and when needed. I hope that this evening that we can object or at least abstain and demand that the social and affordable housing is put back to how it was originally intended and integrated within the mix. After all, aren't we supposed to love thy neighbour instead of alienating people by sticking them in a corner? I would once again like to raise concerns about the play park area that is planned. This could be, this could be divisive as we already have play parks on hand within the area. Instead, I would like to have seen the money used to improve what's already in place, encouraging new residents to enjoy and integrate. If, however, the plans for the new play area are to go ahead, I would like to see items installed with a thought for youngsters with disabilities, maybe even a swing that could be adopted for the use of a wheelchair user. And that's just a thought. I'm also raising concerns about the so-called need to build shops and units that can be used for a variety of businesses 
as laid out in the plan application. We do not need more businesses. We need to support what we already have in the area. When phase one was submitted, we were told there was plenty of shops nearby and we sadly saw the Jaguar pub demolished to make way for the much needed shops, as we were told at the time. We have, shop, we have these shops, shops on Pasture Road, shops at Montrose Court, and we have two post offices within walking distance of Field Farm development. Stapleford Town Centre is close enough to walk or to drive if need be, and there are two nearby buses that can be used to get to the town centre. Surely we should be encouraging people to use the businesses we already have, especially following the difficult times I've had for the past two years nearly. I'd also like to raise concerns about the start time on the site, as I know they have been on site from 7.15 in the morning, causing a disturbance to the res residents. They shouldn't be on there till 8 o'clock, if I'm correct. And can we also insist that some wheel washers are on site for all vehicles leaving the site? And can we insist that when lorries leave the site, they cover the tops before leaving and not after leaving? This will help stop the amount of soil dropped on Tilkeston Road. I would also like to raise concerns about the block drains along Ilkeston Road as I've never seen the road flood like it currently does and I've lived there, around there for a very long time. This appears to have gotten worse since the road sweeper keeps working up and down Ilkeston Road after the lorries of soil leave the site. Whilst it is appreciated the roads are swept, could it be that he's actually sweeping the soil into the drains causing the block drains which could result in a recent flood on Ilkeston Road? And lastly, I would like to raise concerns about the hedgerow and trees along Ilkeston Road. Now, you, you will no doubt be told this evening they are not part of the development being discussed this evening, but I feel they're very much part of the bigger picture and most definitely part of the field farm development in one way or another. The trees are not blocking the proposed new road, and as that is further along the road from where the trees are. Again, the trees do not block the view from coming into or off the road. There is also plenty of room for a proposed cycle path without cutting the trees down. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak this evening and I would also like to thank my fellow councillor Jan Gould who's raised these same concerns as I have. Thank you. Thank you very much and um, uh, uh, Richard because you've uh, spoken as the ward member the rules do allow you a right of reply at the end as well should you wish to uh, uh, take that up. So. I'm not being rude but I've got to shoot off now because I've got to be somewhere else so okay. I'm sorry I can't stop for the rest of the meeting but thank you again That's for right. me speak. Well, thank you very much for coming. OK, well, the recommendation is to approve planning permission, so I shall move the recommendation. I second that, Chair. Thank you very much. And I'll now open this up for debate. Any comments, questions or um, uh, views anyone wishes to uh, uh, to express? Uh, Councillor Hallam. Thanks, Chair. Um, I don't want, to, uh, don't want to sound like I'm repeating things um, that, uh, that my friend Richard McRae has said. Uh, but I'd like to supplement some of them. Um, the clumping of the social housing is a concern. I know that um, recently other large developments, we've uh, worked quite diligently to make sure that different types of housing um, is well integrated and creates a cohesive and holistic community. Um, this is a backward step. I would say that the previous plans didn't go far enough, but were probably sufficient. This is definitely a retrograde step. Um, and I'd prefer to see this deferred um, for the developer to go away and review what they can do and make it better. Um, overall, I support the application. The concern I also uh, share with my friend Richard McRae is the the trees, the tree positioning, and this is best illustrated on page 47 um, of, the, um, of the application where you can see uh, quite a clear drawing of where the new trees are gonna go on one side of the red line and where the old trees are, uh, the existing mature ones on Ilkeston Road. And they're, um, and they're clumped together. Uh, I would like to see if it were at all possible um, the developers move the new trees to somewhere where they can actually supplement the existing ones rather than be in the northern shadow of the existing trees that are on Elkiston Road. I think that would be a lot better in terms of wildlife corridor. That would be a lot better in terms of uh, noise blocking and uh, from, the, uh, from the road and creating a, a much greener, more welcoming space for, uh, for, for everybody, existing residents and new residents. Um, so... I, would really, really like to see that. There's ample room on that um, on that southern stretch of the uh, of the boundary for the uh, for, for the new trees to be uh, to be placed sort of 
equidistantly along and actually balance everything up rather than be planted in the shadow of the existing ones. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Um, proposing to plant a, a set of new trees directly to the north of uh, the existing ones seems to be very odd given that uh, they would be constantly in uh, shadow. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? Uh, Councillor Jackson. Yeah, um, I agree with the suggestion that we should defer it for a number of reasons. Um, totally agree with the positioning of the um, affordable housing element, and, and I don't think any of us, we've said this so many times at this committee, I think any of us want to see um, the, the segregation in that way um, for, for a whole load of reasons. So I think this ought to go back uh, with a request that that be improved. Um, I listened to the um, argument about the trees. Uh, I think that's a valid one as well. Um, there's an, a, there's a, a, one of the conditions, I forget where it is, talks about re replacing trees that are removed. If you can't avoid re removing those trees, I think it ought to be strengthened to say replacing them with mature trees um, wherever possible. Um, and I'd really suggest, if, I, I mean, if I need to formally propose that it's deferred, I'll do that now. Um, and if, if, if colleagues agree, I think rather than discussing this twice over, we might be better off just moving on and uh, getting on with deferring it, Chairman. Yeah, I'm very happy to uh, uh, to second that uh, for the same reasons that uh, um, all of those that have been uh, said. I can see Councillor Owen is indicated to speak, as is... Um, uh, <laughs> Councillor Owen first. Each other. Um, uh, but... Councillor Owen, and I will ask Mr Dawson to come in before we take a vote on, on, on that. Yes, uh, Chairman, whilst we're talking to the developer, one thing that's concerned me looking at the drawings and the diagrams is just how bland and boring and unimaginative the designs of the houses are. I know that they will be their standard models, but... Right at the very beginning, once it had been decided that this land at Field Farm should be developed, we wanted and, and we tried hard to get it to be a showcase development, particularly a showcase development in terms of design. And originally, we rejected the initial application on the grounds that what was proposed then was, as I just said, unimaginative and boring. Uh, we lost that appeal, unfortunately. We went to appeal and we lost. And so they came in with these awful designs. I really would have hoped that we could have got something better than what is proposed now. We see these all over the borough, the new housing developments. They're so bland, so uninteresting. I would have thought this was an ideal opportunity for a developer to actually make a positive statement in terms of design and I find it particularly disappointing that they have decided at this stage that they don't want to do so. So I would hope that message could also be taken back. We want some we want to see something that's a little more inspiring. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, now there was lots of finger pointing going on. Is it Councillor McGraw next? Thank you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. yeah. As Councillor McRae said, the use of the open spaces concerns me as well. I'm not an expert on design and everything. Obviously, the, the trees, but the use of the open spaces around that area as well is, uh, unless some of us know the area, I'm sure Councillor Pringle and Lydia do, is is we've got pit, pit lane at the top there. We've got a football field, we've got a, a lovely plateau that can be used for numerous things and the links between the Nottingham and Trowel Canal and all that, the things that I think we need to be looking at as well to improve the actual, what's that word, pull of the area because Trowel hasn't really got anything, football fields, cricket fields or anything, so I think we need to be looking at how we can enhance that as well as part of the development. But. I, I'd prefer if we went back and deferred that as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Pringle. Thank you, Chair. Um, can we just go look at, if we, we're going to defer it, I guess that's what's going to happen this evening. 
can we go back to the recommendations and specifically uh, recommendation number 11, which talks about flooding or mitigating flooding. Um, you probably know, I've mentioned it before, but the, a lot of the residents that live in Trial Park Estate uh, didn't actually suffer from flooding, apart from a little bit from the Boundary Brook, but we didn't end up with houses being uh, vac vacated for up to a year until the initial development started and was indeed completed on uh, Field Farm. So I would just like, if we are going to defer it, to go back to this recommendation 11. Um, it's, a, it's a strange expression to use, but it's, it's quite relevant, I guess. Make section uh, recommendation 11 watertight so that basically what it doesn't do is it doesn't sort of worsen what we're originally suffering. I mean, for me, as a councillor, a parish councillor in trial and a ward councillor for Waterworth Castle and trial, to see people uh, not being able to live in their houses for a year uh, since 1929 to 2019, and also uh, still waiting almost two years now for the uh, mitigation that's going to be put in place to stop the houses from being flooded again, and it still hasn't happened. And every time there's a heavy rainfall, I get emails and phone calls from the residents because they're worried about the houses flooding. So I really, I would ask that we need to make sure this recommendation here, everything in it is absolutely watertight because the residents deserve it. They don't deserve to have what's happening to them at the moment. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, it's quite a few things, actually. Um, we, I think we need to remember as a planning committee the existing permissions in place. So certain things we can change, certain things we can't. So just be a bit careful because we talked about um, the play parks, for example, and a few other bits um, to the shop units. They're not being revisited here, so we can't revisit them as part of the application. Whilst it may be a concern, we can't do anything about that, unfortunately. Um, I will go back to the agent regard if it is deferred with regards to the issues raised about social affordable housing, putting it together. Um, the, the housing department does like it in one location and manages it better, but I understand the arguments you put forward as well. So I'll report those back. The start time that's raised is an enforcement issue we're aware of. Um, wheel washing is easy, you can put a condition on if you need to. Um, the landscaping is still a condition that's not been um, actually discharged yet and is part of the scheme. So it's relatively easy, I think, to sort that, that out with regards to trees not in the shadow of other trees. So we can sort that if it is deferred before the next um, planning committee and the issue of replacing mature trees as well. Um, then coming on to two more tricky elements um, with regards to design, I also understand some of the comments raised about design. We lost it on appeal on design before, and in my view, these designs are better than the previous one we lost the appeal on. So I think we've got to be a bit careful in terms of the elements. I'll report that back, but I think we'll be careful that we did lose the design this site before on appeal. Um, another thing with regards to the flooding condition uh, and what I, I take the point entirely, but they are the condition does say about a flood assessment being submitted, which shows the EA and they were happy in the past with it. Any further developments will have a flood assessment submitted. We'll have to go to the EA in collaboration with us to make sure it's okay. So I do think that point is already covered anyway, but I'll take the point on board. That's all. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Pringle. Uh, with regards to the, 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 the site, what's, what's happened there is, which is what's causing the flooding, is uh, every piece of topsoil has been removed. So what they're doing is they're building on clay. Now, clay is very good at absorbing water, but it only absorbs a certain amount of water, and then what happens is all the rest just runs off. And that's the big problem that the, with the whole site is that they, every bit of topsoil was removed, and it's just the houses are built on clay. So that's, that's the issue, and that's, that's what needs to be looked at. And it's okay saying, you know, the calculations demonstrate and that sort of thing, but you just have to look, look at Google, and it'll tell you what clay does, just as I said. It absorbs water. When it's when it's saturated, all the water runs out and it ends up in Trial Park Drive. So that's that's what needs to be looked at. Sorry to keep on about it, but it's it really needs to, to be sorted. Okay, thank you. And certainly, um, the restoration of topsoil uh, topsoil can be part of a landscaping condition as well. So I think we do have the powers there, but um, I'll, I'll make sure that that is discussed further with uh, all the relevant authorities and the applicants. Okay, thank you. Anybody else wish to raise anything? Well, if not, we've had a motion to suggest that this is deferred. Uh, that's been seconded. Can I see all those in favour? Okay, so that is, I think, unanimous. Thank you very much.
Uh, fairly confident that that will be coming back to us again in, uh, in, in due course. So we move on then to item 5.2. This is land between Ellis Grove and Wilmot Lane and, uh, uh, in Beeston. Construct four-storey building to accommodate retirement apartments, including communal, communal facilities, access car parking and landscaping. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, Mr Dawson, we'd like to introduce this. Page 53. Thank you, Chair. Right, yeah, there's no late items on this particular um, application. Uh, the principal development on this wider brownfield site has already been established with the approval of several previous permissions. Um, the application seeks permission for a four-storey building to accommodate um, apartments, including community facilities, means of access, car parking, landscaping. Um, to front the site, there's approval for a care home, uh, back site already, um, sorry, it's, this is the front of the site and approval care home is already to the rear. Main issues are highway section 1 6 payments and amenity. Um, with the four storey building, 51 apartments in total, mix of one and two beds, 19 car, 19 car parking spaces. The NCC recognises the site is a very sustainable location given its proximity to the bus and tram facilities and the Beeston Town Centre. They think it's adequate and comparable to similar establishments throughout the country um, and are content. With regards to the section 1 is 6, um, 558,000 is what the complaint policies currently say. Um, this, this suggestion was contested by the applicant, um, suggesting over 165. Furthermore, we've come back and now for expediency, they've agreed to pay 230 following the submission of a viability assessment, which is outlined in the report. If members do wish to approve it, if we get that far, we do have to suggest what the 230,000 is used for, please. Um, with regards to amenity, there's good separation distances from the shops on the upper floors of properties to the northwest and the opposite side of Chirol Road. Minimum distance 27 metres between the rear elevation on the northeast and Ellis Grove. Um, we think access of Wilmot Lane, as proposed, is a better option than Ellis Grove. Fairly happy, recommending approval, subject to section 106. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. We do have a public speaker on this. So do we have Stuart Goodwill? Oh, you're in place already. Thank you very much, Mr Goodwill. Um, so there's a microphone in front of you. Press the right button. Hopefully the red light will come on. That's brilliant. Thank you. So, sir, the floor is yours. You have three minutes, and I'll give you a prompt about 30 seconds from the end. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, members, thank you for the opportunity to speak. We've worked closely with officers, consultees and the community throughout this application. I'm pleased it is before you with a recommendation for approval. The government identifies the delivery of older persons housing as critical and the proposed development offers a high quality scheme for older people on a sustainable brownfield site. Roxdow's housing needs assessment identifies a current shortfall of 714 private leasehold retirement dwellings with the figure set to increase to over 1,000 dwellings without further delivery. The National Planning Policy Guidance advises local authorities to take a positive approach to schemes such as this where there is an unmet need. The principle of residential development on this site has been established with the extant consent for the care home and 30 supported living units. The site is also identified as a housing commitment in the local plan part 2 and complies with policy 14. The scheme will deliver economic benefits with the provision of direct and indirect jobs. There will be an increase in local spending on the high street, with the majority of residents being daily basket shoppers. It has been estimated that retirement housing delivers fiscal savings to the NHS of £3,500 per person per annum. This is because the accommodation has been specifically designed to be safe and accessible for people as they age. There is a level access throughout, reducing the risk of falls in a lodge manager and a 24-hour care line to give assistance when needed. The proposal will provide the opportunity for residents to downsize, freeing up larger, often unoccupied family homes elsewhere in the local housing market area. There are significant social benefits. There is a large communal lounge and coffee bar, which is highly valued social space. It is often used for coffee mornings, film nights, bridge clubs, fish and chip suppers. These reduce the risk of loneliness and social isolation. The proposed scheme is for a high quality contemporary design, including a recess fourth floor to fit with the recent modern developments on this part of Chilwell Road. The proposed height, scale and massing is significantly reduced from the extant consent and is set further away from the properties on Ellis Grove. The nature of retirement living developments with large areas of communal space and slower sales rates makes it difficult to deliver full affordable housing targets. 
Nevertheless, an independent assessment has been carried out, concluding that the scheme can provide 230,000 towards affordable housing and open space. We will provide this full amount, and it should be noted that the extant consent provides no affordable housing. The typical purchaser is a 78-year-old widow, often moving in following a significant life event, such as the fall or death of a partner. It is typically a needs-based move with their existing property no longer being suitable. The nature of residence, together with the sustainable location reflecting lower levels of car ownership and use, provided, uh, provided with our parking survey evidence of similar schemes, the Highway Authority considered the pros level of parking acceptable. In conclusion, the pros scheme offers significant benefits to future residents as well as the local community. And accordingly, I commend your officer's recommendation to members. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you'd like to, uh, uh, to take your seat again. Thank you. Well, the recommendation is to grant planning permission, so I shall move that recommendation. I'll second that, Chair. Thank you. And I shall open this up for any comments, questions or debates. Councillor Hallam. Thanks, Chair. I'm very concerned and frankly upset about the substantial reduction in the Section 106 contributions for this application. Um, we've been told many times, and I, um, and I, and I do believe, that the all of the asks on the Section 106 are formulaic and um, contained within um, planning legislation. Um, they should therefore be predictable. And I don't see why the local community, both the new community that we uh, that will be moving in and the existing community, should um, suck up the costs in terms of less than adequate provision to, uh, to in this case, um, the, the, uh, the NHS, to uh, local amenity, parks and spaces, affordable housing, yada, yada. Why should that be sucked up um, on the basis of what I think is just simply not calculating the costs of the development, specifically the Section 106, in advance? Now, if a developer were to do that in terms of the bricks and mortar, then I don't think they'd be going to Jusons and saying, well, we've got an independent somebody to write an assessment that says we really can't afford the bricks and mortar, but we want you to give, we want, you know, we want them anyway. I don't think that would wash. So what is any different about what we and other authorities are asking for in terms of Section 106? Um, it, which is a real shame, because other than that, I would be very minded to support this application, because I think in all other ways it's spectacular. Um, but it's not our fault that these costs weren't calculated, and I don't see why should, we should suck it up. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Councillor Owen. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased to hear that uh, Councillor Hallam is taking the issue of Section 106 contributions more seriously than appears to have been, take, been taken in the past, because this is something uh, we have been on about for a long, long time now. But, of course, Broxtow has a long and, I don't think, very proud history of waiving significant amounts of Section 106 monies in terms of infrastructure. Uh, but I won't say any more on that, because my main concern here is that this is an over-intensification of development uh, on the site. As I read it, there are 51 units proposed and there are 19 parking spaces proposed. And I look at the top of page 56 and the justification for having so few parking spaces is that it's a very sustainable location. Now, isn't that an overused word, sustainable? And when we drill down into it, what sustainable means is that there's a bus stop nearby and there's a tram nearby. And not only that, uh, you've got easy walking and cycling distances to Beeston Town Centre. Now, I thought this was a complex, we call it retired living now, elderly persons. So are we seriously expecting geriatrics like me to get on their bike and cycle into the centre of Beeston or Chilwell. You know, that is really quite ridiculous to suggest that that is a justification for so few parking spaces. 
And it's a bit of an insult to uh, the more mature in society these days that are going to live, or would like to live in these sort of developments to suggest that they're not capable or shouldn't have a car. I know even with the council's own retirement living complexes that parking is, or lack of parking, is an issue. Many years, I know Councillor Mrs Owen was uh, campaigning to get additional parking at the spinney in her ward and eventually got some extra parking. And I've heard other members say that there are parking issues at our retirement living complexes. Now, there's an excuse for that because they were built 30 and 40 years ago before car ownership was as pre prevalent as it is now. But when we know that there is going to be an issue, not to take account of that particular issue is to me a nonsense. And to suggest that there is parking, uh, additionally parking is controlled within the vicinity. I'm not sure what is meant by that, uh, whether they mean traffic regulation orders so that you can't park anyway, or there are pay to park car parks. Well, you don't... <laughs> You don't want to have to be constantly paying to park your car in a car park. So I'm afraid that is not a satisfactory and acceptable state of affairs. So I am not minded to support the application tonight because I think it's an over-intensification of, of development and I think there is totally inadequate parking in the light of today's experience that we have with retirement living complexes. And so, as I say, I shall vote against it. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I will just say that my grandfather used to cycle to visit us uh, over the top of the North Yorkshire Moors well into his 70s. Uh, when he got to nearly 80, we did persuade him to stop. But uh, um, uh, on behalf of uh, um, a huge community of older cyclists, I think they would be um, upset to be dismissed as not uh, uh, as not realistic anybody else want to raise anything now well it seems to me that um yeah i understand what uh councillor hallam and indeed uh councillor owen have said about the um uh, the section 106 uh provision but we've had our own independent assessment carried out and our independent assessment says that this site can afford to generate £230,000 and that is what is uh, being offered. Um, I, I think if we went to a planning appeal on the basis that um, we want more than our own people say can be afforded, uh, then we would look very, very silly uh, indeed. And... Um, it is frustrating that we have policies that cannot be implemented in full over Section 106 uh, contributions, but we have to be realistic. Um, we do want to get uh, units developed, places built, and um, there is no point effectively pricing ourselves out of the market by saying we require you to pay an amount that our own experts say cannot be afforded. And so it, it seems to me that the, um, uh, the, the Section 106 amount being offered here is the appropriate amount because it's what our own uh, um, assessment has said and therefore I would support the application in regard to that. In regard to parking, there are a number of similar sites to this around the borough. There are many, many hundreds around the country of developments like this and it is quite notable that a large number of the occupants do not have cars that they've moved away uh, from that and the facilities are arranged to ensure that uh, they don't need uh, cars um, again I think of uh, where my granddad lived and that had 80 uh, units within it and I think there were 12 parking spaces and yet I got parked there every time I went to visit him because there simply wasn't the, uh, the demand for parking uh, there. Um, it is right that some developments were built before the dependency on the car became as great as they are now, but 
uh, one of the huge steps that we need to take in terms of sustainable living is to make sure that we move away from the dependency uh, on the car. Uh, and this seems to be a perfectly suited uh, location, uh, a perfectly sensible location to, uh, uh, to do that. So I can see, I have to say, no reason to vote against this uh, uh, application. I think we're getting uh, the maximum amount that we could expect in the Section 106, uh, and therefore I'm very happy to support it. Okay, anybody else want to say anything? Uh, Councillor Pringle. In Trowell we have uh, Church Close, which is a rock stove uh, operated uh, old people's homes. There are 21 of them and there are six parking spaces and the residents fight each other daily to park cars. So par car parking is a big issue. And I don't, but we, we seem to, you know, two years into this planning committee, member of this planning committee, I think probably three applications in each meeting talk about parking. And we just don't seem to do anything about it. We just seem to accept that either um, it's, it's, it's good enough or we just sort of gloss over it as we seem to be doing here. Parking is, is a, an issue and, uh, you know, it's, it's, we should do something about it. And, and really, the number of spaces that are here for the number of units that are being built and okay, yes, the, the, as we see from the pictures, the tram stops just outside and, uh, and there is a bus service, but some old people still like their independence. They don't, they don't want to, to sort of close themselves into a multi-unit place like this and not have the freedom to, uh, to get into their car if they wish to, to go somewhere else. And uh, you could say, well, okay, they could get onto the tram and go to the railway station and go to a rail somewhere. But people, again, don't want to do that sort of thing. They want their independence. And I think what we're doing here is actually clamping down on our independence. So, uh, as it stands, I can't support it. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Marshall. Thank you, Chair. Um, I support uh, the position that Councillor Watts has articulated just previous to this. And there is a, a situation of, it sounds like, personal interest driving decisions here. So Councillor Pringle, for instance, is rightly, rightly concerned about flooding issues, but clearly doesn't want to also bring into the concept on the previous application that it was we've had the wettest period and climate is involved in that issue. We had the wettest period, seventh wettest period since 2019. And that is clearly an impact of climate change. We have an opportunity here to address some of the most underlying causes of climate change. And we have to be brave as an authority when we're making decisions about planning and move away from the default position on the reliance of the car as the primary mode of transport. There is not, I don't think, a more connected place in terms of sustainable public transport than the site we are talking about in the whole of Broxton. I know that because it's at the bottom of my road and it's in my ward. There is a world-class tram system, I think a national winning bus system with cycle routes and close provision, both in terms of walking to other, um, other locations as well. And the primary driver shouldn't be an expectation that residents of a retirement community should be having a reliance on the car. It will be a life choice for residents of that home when they are talking um, about or, or looking at moving there. The impact on residents is an important issue, but there is very well um, uh, controlled parking within the vicinity around Ellis Grove, around Imperial Road, on the high road itself at Chilwell, um, and on uh, Park Road and Grove, uh, the neighbouring streets. And in that sense, I don't think there will be an adverse negative impact from the provision that is set out and indeed um, the weight of, of car use um, that will be there. In that sense, we should be supporting this type of development on a piece of land which has been redundant for a long time. And this is a good, uh, attractive development to meet the needs of the community 
that we have. Now, Mr. Dawson at his outset said, we almost, if we want to support this um, application, we should also be considering how section, 101 is, section 106 monies are uh, um, attributed. I would like to include in that um, discussion um, and that consideration the West End Community Centre open space just at the back of um, just at the back of the proposed development off Barrydale uh, um, took towards there. So that should be included as a uh, an area for consideration of 106 monies because they do offer significant resources as well for uh, elderly um, people within the community as well. So I, I would request that that is included as well. But I'll be supporting this application. It isn't perfect when it comes to other shortfalls in 106 monies. We recognise that. But I will be supporting the overall benefits that this will be bringing to the community. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Robinson. Chair, thank you. Um, I do support this proposal. Um, I don't want to get into the point that Councillor Hallam made about Section 106 because he made them very uh, forcefully. And I think that there's some good things there that we can take and certainly use for benchmarks in the future. However, I think on the other point, I think we do need to remember that this is not about the inalienable right to own a car. This is about building houses and about giving people longer term and security, and, and particularly for older people, there is no inalienable right to have a car. I mean, we, they can have a choice. If they don't want to move to this area that has limited car parking spaces, they don't have to do there. But we've got, but we have a right. We have a right to encourage people to use public transport to make the most of it. And I think, and as you said, Chair, to write people off who are 60, 70 and older and say that then that they might not want to use public transport, that they may not want to use their bikes. These are the way, these are the things that we actually need to be encouraging for all sorts of purposes. So I will fully support this, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything else? Anyone else? No, Mr. Dawson, anything you'd like to pick up on? Thank you very much. Uh, well, it's been moved and seconded. Can I see all those in favour of granting planning permission, please? One, two, three, four, five, six, and those against. One, two, three, four, five. Is that how you made it, six, five? Yeah. Yes, so planning permission is granted. Thank you very much. Can we discuss what we're spending to be on? Yes, indeed, that's a, a, a very valid point. We have £230,000 then of um, Section 106 monies. Um, the options for this, I guess, are that we do it pro rata or we can choose where to allocate um, uh, money to. Mr Dawson, any thoughts on this? Um, not really, thank you, Chair. Um, if you look at the end of paragraph 6.3.2, it just outlines that it's enhancement of public open space, which would be um, what Councillor Marshall referred to, um, whether it goes towards some of the local infrastructure in terms of the health practices or towards affordable housing or as i said one or combination of these so if you want to split it equally between those three things that's fine if you want to suggest um there's more need for health versus open space for affordable housing that stuff to members as well i appreciate that's not much of a steer i'm afraid i'm sorry but that's the position we have unfortunately um right i've got two hands went up councillor marshall and then councillor hallam is that decision decision fixed from this committee, the, the proportions, or can it be discussed and then somehow agreed? Correct me if I'm wrong here, Bryony, but I think it'll be fixed. Because I think if we had to change it, we'd have to come back. Um, so, correct me if I'm here, but I think it's, it's the member's decision to make. It yeah, just feels it's... like a bit more consideration needs to be given to the, the need, I guess is what I'm saying. And, and if, I don't know, somewhere by agreement there can be some discussion of need around there, then that, that's the only, that's the only yeah. point I'm making. Uh, Councillor Hallam wanted to come in. Thanks, Chair. Um, just, just as a point of note from last time, you didn't ask for abstentions. The reason the numbers for the purpose of democratic services didn't uh, didn't add up is because I abstained, uh, given the basis of the pros and cons of the application. Um, 
given my umbrage with the uh, with the section 106 it basically seems to me that nobody's going to get what they ask for unless you leave other people out so i think the most sensible suggestion is that everybody suffers equally on a pro rata, pro rata basis uh, to do anything other than that would be uh, would be declining the you know potentially de denying the viability of what people have already asked for okay councillor jackson can we not somehow refer this to Councillor Hallam's committee for consideration. If I'm going to make a decision how we're splitting £230,000, it wants to be done on, on the basis of need. Uh, as far as I know, local open space is good quality uh, in the vicinity. I, I might be wrong, but I'd like to see a proper report with facts in it for consideration how we're spending, getting on for a quarter million pounds of money. Um, we all know there's a problem in affordable housing. Uh, I'd like to see numbers of people on waiting lists uh, within you know, a mile or two of this site. I'd also like to see uh, what's needed for public transport improvements in the area. If we're going to balance this, I don't want to be chucking you know, a third of it at open space if it's not needed at the cost of one or two units of affordable housing. It seems quite ridiculous to me. Thank you. Can we do that, Bernie? Um, I suggest maybe deferring um, the decision in relation to the Section 106 contributions until um, a, a later meeting. Any decision that's made now will be the, the final decision in relation to the contributions. Right. So we, can we grant planning permission but defer that one item? Yeah. 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 In, in which case I think that would be... Uh, that's what I'm leaning is the wish of the members, Council Marshall. Yeah, I mean, we, can, we can we can agree two hundred thirty thousand, can't we? Yes. And and then just defer the way it's it's split. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, if everyone's happy uh, to do that, then um, I'll, I'll propose that we defer the decision on the uh, splitting of the section one hundred six or the allocation of the section one hundred six money uh, to a future meeting. I'll second that, Chair. Thank you very much. Anybody want to say anything on that? In which case, uh, sorry, Mr. McDawson. Yeah. Just, just that I'll check with Democratic Services tomorrow whether it can come should come out to this committee or Jobs and Economy Committee. But either way, as the granting and planning permission is subject to Section Six anyway, we do have time to find out the needs assessment, etc. As per Councillor Jackson's request, so and I shall update accordingly. Right, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, can I see then all those in favour of deferring that one part of the decision? Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? No, that is carried unanimously. Right, thank you very much. <coughs> okay, we move on then to a uh, uh, item 5.3, which is not quite next door, but very, very close to the uh, uh, the last application. Uh, this is an application to construct a three-storey building comprising nine student apartments. Um, and this is on Ellis Grove again. Members may recall that this application, or a, an earlier version of this application, came to the committee in uh, September. Uh, we refused it then, partly on the grounds of uh, parking, uh, and that has now been uh, revised, and so there's an amended application that's come back. Uh, Mr Dawson, would you like to introduce this? Yeah, thank you, Chair. You've largely covered most of it, I think. Um, revised scheme that was come to committee in September, which was used on parking grounds. Um, this is developing an existing warehouse site, which would be replaced. Um, and as we've pre just discussed the other scheme, um, there's a um, bed care, 60th bed care home nearby, um, and it's part of the Myford site, immediately adjacent. Three apartments per floor. The principal's been established under... Um, the 18 planning permission, which is 18538, this is, this is a two-bed scheme, a scale is not out keeping with the area. Due to separation distances and other by, nearby uses, we don't believe mean-to is an issue. Um, <clears throat> we are aware of the proposed development nearby, as we've been discussing, and happy with that. Um, the main issue last time was parking. Previously, there were five spaces, there's now 14. Um, so, and there's no higher objections last time, but certainly following amended plans, they're quite happy with the increase in parking. We consider this more than efficient for the area. <coughs> no other issues. Recommend approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. There is um, no public speaking on this one, so I shall move the recommendation, which is grant planning permission. I'll second that, Chair. Thank you. And any comments, questions or observations? 
uh, Councillor Hallam. Thanks, Chair. I, th I think it's um, a marked improvement, um, so much so that I'm, I'm definitely uh, going to be supporting this application. I do think it's odd. Um, the location of the, of the bin store has uh, moved from um, next to the building where it would be useful to the people living there to the other side of the car park right next to the street where people are going to be driving in and out. Now 14 people as opposed to five people are going to be driving in and out past people wanting to empty their bins and stuff. I think it's an odd decision, but not one that's so magnificent that I would be minded to, uh, to change my vote and just uh, raise that as a, as a point of note. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I guess the explanation is probably it's easier to get them out onto the road from there, but uh, yeah, I think there's a, a valid point. Uh, anybody else? Councillor Marshall, were you indicating, or was that just your pen quickly? No. Uh, um, Councillor Walmart. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Chairman. I've, I received an email today lobbying on this application from a person called Ian Collier, and uh, it, it, it appears to me he's neither for nor against the development. He's putting forward some suggestions or comments that ought to be taken account of. Can I, can I ask uh, Mr Dawson, have you seen this uh, email? We did have one late item that I should have said at the start. I uh, can't remember who it's from. Um, not Mr Cull, I don't think. Um, but the one additional objection talked about five parking spaces being inadequate. So yeah. I'm considering that that um, person was not looking at the amended plans, seeing as we've got more than five parking spaces now, but that's all we've had um, well, uh, today. I'm just a little bit surprised to get this then. In that case, uh, I've uh, not been following this particular application in detail over time, but he's making some quite, uh, um, in my opinion, I think useful suggestions. The first one is that uh, in the previous application, there was uh, the use of obscured glass to overcome overlooking. We know how delicate a subject overlooking is. And uh, there was a clause in that, about in, in the consideration of that application. And he said, uh, I request that the existing condition 13 be carried forward from the already approved planning permission for the site. So um, I'm surprised that the planning department haven't sort of taken this into account when they've been preparing the, the script on this particular issue now, tonight doesn't seem to have been done very thoroughly to me if that's a sensible suggestion and it does seem to be sensible as far as I can well, well I can read it without knowing all the background to it this this man appears to live on Barrydale Avenue which is quite near the site so um, you know I'm, I'm, I'm a, a, a bit disappointed that things like this aren't taken, taken into account before it even comes to us the other suggestion he puts forward is about the management of the site uh, by the Raven Group. Now, if what he's saying here is true, and again, we've only got his word for it, he says Raven Group appeared to be an electrical contractors with no experience of managing residential accommodation, let alone student accommodation. And we know that student accommodation does have problems which doesn't occur with normal residential uh, um, accommodation. I mean, I've got... Uh, uh, grandchildren who have been students and I hear the stories and things that go on uh, about the student behavior and things like that so uh, I've got practical knowledge in that direction and I've had to underwrite guarantees for my grandchildren uh, with landlords and things like that and I've had to look into the details of, of that kind of thing so if this company Raven Group have got no clue which is what he's alleging on uh, how, to, how you manage a block of students with uh, great potential for antisocial behaviour, unfortunately. Um, and uh, have, our, have our planning department as such examine the credentials of the Raven Group and they're going to be the managing, or are Raven Group going to subcontract the managing of this, these premises to uh, another group or, or is their whole intention to, to get this thing plan, planning through planning and then sell it on as an investment? But it uh, seems to me that... Uh, um, it's all a bit premature. And again, I would have thought that's something that ought to have been looked in by our officers, and that's what we pay our officers for. Sorry okay. to be critical. No, no that, that's fine. Thank you very much. Um, 
obviously I asked Mr Dawson to come back at the end, but um, uh, I received that email as well. But I don't think we can criticise the officers for not dealing with an email when it wasn't actually sent to them. Um, uh, it was sent to uh, uh, the members of the committee today. However, um, if you look at page 83 in paragraph 14, uh, or condition 14, um, the windows of the southwest elevation at first and second floor should be uh, obscurely grazed, uh, grazed, glazed, right. to Pilkington level four or five or equivalent, um, and non-opening. Um, and so that actually deals with the issue of overlooking the amenity. There is the glazed uh, windows uh, within there. The the other one uh, about the management of the site, um, it's a fairly well established principle of planning law that the applicant is not, uh, the, the identity of the applicant is not a planning ground. So I don't think we could uh, lawfully refuse permission uh, just because the Raven Group haven't got experience uh, uh, of running um, uh, a site um, uh, and that applies whether it's an individual wanting to build someone uh, something who we think is dodgy or a company um, we have to look purely at the merits of the application not of the applicant so whilst I, I, I understand the concerns that um, uh, were raised, that was uh, raised in that I don't think actually planning we can address that particular one okay thank you, thank you. Um, anybody else want to come in if not, ask Mr Dawson to uh, uh, respond to anything. Yeah, just on, <clears throat> and thank you to Sue for pointing out to me, um, in the bottom of page 74, object to request, condition in respect to partial to glazing, etc, 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 was a summary of that, of that email. And on page 77, the paragraph, <clears throat> top page, um, part went down, request was made by the developer of the care home to condition that the window south is elevation of your glazed, etc, etc. So those points have been covered both the email and the immunity assessment, and as you've referred to, it's in a condition as well. So I'm comfortable that we've actually redressed that prior to email received today. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Any other comments or questions? If not, it's been moved and seconded. Can I see all those in favour, please? And I think that is unanimous. Um, any against? Any abstentions? No, that's unanimous. Thank you very much. So we move on to, to application uh, 5.4. This is the forge at Trowell. This is an application to um, build one new development. Uh, the recommendation here is actually to refuse planning permission. Um, so I'll ask Mr Dawson to introduce that and then we have a public speaker, uh, Mr Haynes. So Mr Haynes, if you want to move to the seat to get ready, that's great. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr Dawson, we'd like to introduce this. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, it'll be nice to get through a committee without anything on Greenbelt, but never mind. Um, there's a new dwelling and associated acoustic fencing. Um, there's a reason amount of history on this site, and we have had historical refusal on Greenbelt grounds. Um, we don't consider this, based on the sort of national planning framework definition, to be an infill or a placement dwelling, and therefore, with no BSC, we recommend refusal based on the Greenbelt policy grounds. Um, we are happy with the scale and design of the dwelling, but we don't believe there's um, sufficient amenity space either and therefore we're suggesting you fuse on those grounds as well. So, unfortunately, from our point of view, we think it fails on two grounds, recommend refusal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, now that presumably wasn't Mr Hayes, then he just walked out. Uh, you're Mr Hayes, thank you. We'd like to take the seat, sir. <laughs> um, if you can press the button on the right, a red light should come on. That's yeah, the right. yep. So, sir, the floor is yours, and as with the previous <laughs> application, I'll give you a prompt about 30 seconds from the end. Right here. Thank you. Over to you. Mr Chairman, officers and members of the committee, I am currently res uh, residing at my mother's home in Ilkeston following my company's insolvency and the breakdown of my marriage. I am therefore seeking to build my, myself a two-bed bungalow on land I own at the Forge Trowel as a retirement home for myself and partner. Although technically the site is Greenbelt, it is not a greenfield and hasn't been out for over 50 years. As no SS1 status, the Forge is covered by a CLU for the storage, management and maintenance of vintage industrial machinery relating to farming, which is a family tradition. That began with my father, to which now I wish to continue. 
The site is 1,087 square metres and was originally carving sheds, which my father began leasing in 1975. British Rail applied to develop the site in 1982, which was refused. In lieu of payment of debt owing, a further application was made for an housing on this site, but that was also refused. The forge was, was finally purchased by my father in 1997 and we have continually utilised this land for the uh, for mentioned use. Because of the continued attempt to try to break in, a two metre fence and, and, uh, was erected along with steel gates and other security purposes. I therefore am seeking the permission by the committee to be allowed to develop myself a family home for the following reasons. The site is surrounded by security fencing and has never been a greenfield site or accessible to the public for as long as I can remember, well over 50 years. Although classified as greenbelt, I consider it to be the same situation as Toten Sidings, which is also mostly in greenbelt, and that the council Greenbelt allocation is both unfair applied, unfairly applied and demonstrates a rigid flexibility which is unsustainable. The government is positively encouraging self-builds in, in suitable locations and I feel the forge is a prime example of a suitable location. Therefore, I hope the committee will receive my comments positively and allow me the chance to build myself a property to retire and continue my family tradition of keeping vintage industrial agricultural machinery well managed and maintained whilst I live on the site. I would like to thank you for the opportunity to express my views for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you if you'd like to take your, uh, uh, your seat again. Thank okay. you. Well, the, the recommendation is to uh, refuse planning permission, so I shall move the recommendation. I'll second that, Chair. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor Pringle, is your ward? Do you want to go first? Yes, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, as, as the applicant has described, the, uh, the site has been there for a good number of years, and uh, basically uh, it can't be viewed, really, from the from the main road because of the fence that's surrounding it and uh, the the applicant's proposal to uh, to build a house on it um, will in actual fact tidy up the site a little bit because half of the existing black fence that you see on that photograph in front of us there is going to disappear and be replaced by some nicer looking wooden uh, sound deadening fencing which will actually improve the area quite considerably has to be sound deadened because the railway line is particularly close to it as well. But uh, as a as a, a ward council and also as a speaking on behalf of Trial Parish Council, I guess everybody on Trial Parish Council accepted it, and uh, it's just this issue again that we have in both not so much Trial but in Cossel and Allsworth. Lots of sites are in the green belt, but as the applicants just said. That's really never been the bit we're talking about. It's never actually been in the green belt as such because it's been surrounded by that fence for many years. So we're not developing in the green belt. We're developing within a, an area, a fenced off area that sits surrounded by a green belt. So um, I, I, I support this, this application. I think it's very similar to some of the ones we've done, talked about recently in, in, in Cossel in particular. It just seems that the officers have to, because it's in the green belt, have to have to say no. And we, as a committee, uh, you know, just recently have looked at these sort of applications with uh, with a sort of uh, a view that yes, it is green belt, and that's what the officers have to do. But common sense says that what we should do is is uh, allow it to happen. So that's what I should be doing. I'll be voting for it to happen. Thank you very much. Now the second uh, ward councillor is Councillor Ball, so over to you Councillor Ball. Uh, thank you Chair. Uh, yeah, I would like to say that I always sort of think, oh, it's in Greenbelt and, and I am very conscious of, of that fact. But as uh, Don's already said, it's like the ones we've had in Cossel. Um, there are places where I, I do feel that if this was built and given permission, it's not going to be detrimental to the Greenbelt 
it will be in 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 that area that I suppose really you could say is tucked away and um, and I just think that it's someone can build a house and they can actually live there and uh, and and improve the area um I mean, if, if this application came along and they wanted to build it further down where it is an open green, I mean, I, I would have to think twice about that. But I, I do feel that uh, there are times when we can look at it in a sympathetic manner. And uh, I, I do feel that uh, I'm not going to support this as a refusal. I would like to see that area built on and, <coughs> and a family be able to live there. I think that would be much better. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Marshall. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I have a sympathy with this um, application as well and what Councillor Pringle and Ball have said. Um, I think if you to you know list most unlikely sites in a green belt, this would probably be in the top ten of sites which don't look like they belong in a green belt at all. And in that sense, we have a responsibility and the, the dispensation at this committee to make um, practical and exceptional decisions. I think this falls exactly into that type of category and wouldn't be, in that sense, detrimental to to what we perhaps perceive as the environmental signs of the Green Belt. So I'll be supporting this application as well. Thank you very much. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I also support this for some of the reasons um, that Lydia and other people have said. My only regret is is that we didn't use these common sense arguments and very similar ones on a matter that was not too dissimilar in Babington Village last year. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I wasn't here for that application, so uh, I, I couldn't possibly comment on it. Uh, Councillor Hallam. Thanks. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be, it, it looks like the token bad guy um, because I don't support this application. Um, the um, I'm sorry to hear, Chair, of the uh, personal circumstances uh, leading to this of the applicant, but I think people are confusing green field and green belt. Green belt is a ring around an urban area in order to prevent sprawl and growth and um, and areas like, for example, between Nottingham and Derby from uh, from merging into uh, into one super city, and. Well, we, you know, we acknowledge that the green belt is useful. It's predominantly agricultural. Um, this whole area, if you were to take it back before, you know, while while humans were still living in caves, it would have all been forest, not farmland. Um, so, really, you know, we accept that the green belt is um, useful to us, um, and from the rest of the green belt, no, it's not. If it's not residential, and the reason I objected to Babington on the same reasons. If it's an agricultural building, all well and good, that's got its place in the green belt. If you're trying to take an agricultural building and turn it into a residential building, that is contributing to urban sprawl, which is exactly why the green belt exists to prevent that. So I'm sorry to say that in this situation, I can't, I can support the recommendation. I can't support the application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. I know Councillor Ball's itching to get back in. Um, Councillor Ball. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I I do find myself actually here um, having to assure Councillor Hallam that he's not the only bad guy. Um, I have a lot of sympathy with, with the applicant, but I'm afraid when I apply my lawyer's mind to this, uh, I just can't not agree with the recommendation. Um, as we said in the last application, the, the character of the um, applicant is not a planning issue uh, and therefore not something that we can uh, take into account. Um, 
So what we're left to find is, are there very special circumstances? If this was a development outside of the Green Belt, I would be, uh, I would have very few problems with it. But uh, as it's in the Green Belt, um, using the phrase that was popular in the 60s, it's nibbling at it. Uh, and um, for the reasons that uh, uh, Councillor Hallam said, that's of itself a bad thing. Development in the Green Belt is viewed as being harmful unless it's uh, one of various categories of permitted development. Uh, and therefore, there has to be very special circumstances to um, override that. I just can't see them here. Um, I, I, I would love to, but I can't. Uh, and so I can't support um, uh, uh, an application to build on this site or this application to build on, on this site. Um, I suspect the numbers are going to go the other way in any case, um, but I, I'm afraid I can't support it. Uh, Councillor Prindle. Uh, for the benefit of Councillor Hallam and yourself, Chair, uh, the, the name of the site actually indicates the, the history. Uh, that used to be, years ago, a forge. The whole, the whole field that we're looking at um, coming back down this track, which is a footpath actually, um, just the other side of that boat there, there was a forge, and it was a it was a little uh, forge with a hamlet. There was about fifteen or sixteen houses on it. The reason I know that is because when it was uh, put forward as a proposal for pods, if you remember, I nearly fell down with one of the foundations of of the houses when I walked on the site. So that talking about it being a green belt is it's something that's and again it's a bit like Trial Garden Centre to a certain extent as well. Is Trial Garden Centre is a quarry which was a quarry for years had a fence put around it to develop as a, as a, a garden centre, and then the green belt was, was in, enveloped it. And that's what's happened here, because the building we see down from the development, that used to be Trowell Railway Station. So that's again, is another reason why that particular area, yes, it is in the green belt, but it has a sort of a heritage, an industrial heritage. So that's the personal, that's the reason I would say that we have to, uh, Sort of turn down the uh, the officer's decision because basically what's happening is is we've got a piece of land as the applicant said has been used by his family for 50 years and it does need a little bit of tidying up and if this uh, house is built there that will tidy it up that's 50 percent of it's going to be tidied up and it's going to make it look much much better so i think we've just got to sort of look at 